Hello, I'm Molly Cooper and this is a Snapshot episode where we bring you inside scoops from the travel, design and creative spheres. It's the same creative spaces content now in Coffee Break Conversations. Today we're talking all about the joys of a great British holiday. Exploring the best of the UK is at the heart of Creator Spaces, so I'm so excited to welcome Millie Kenny Ryder, who has been helping people discover the best places to go through her weekend journals and under the radar restaurant finds on first sittings. Millie, I can't wait to talk all things holiday with you. Welcome to Creator Spaces, and how are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me after our <laughs> tricky start getting in. A technical glitch. Is Mercury yeah. retrograde? Did I miss that? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'm really oh. excited to be chatting. I'm so excited to be chatting. And yeah, let's move on from this technical glitch of morning and chat about you because you've been up to so many cool things. And I'd love to hear a bit about your background and how you've come to work on things like the weekend journals and first sittings. Absolutely. Well, um, Gosh, I've been doing this a long time now. It feels sort of scary thinking back to when I started it all. Um, Mm -hmm. It was when I left university. I actually trained as a singer at Manchester Uni and started my blog, Thoroughly Modern Millie, about 12, 13 years ago. And it was very much just a sort of online diary for me to rave about all the things that I loved doing in London. So shows, uh, restaurant, meals out, art galleries, um, yeah, all kinds of things, really. And travel sort of came about after a year or two of just writing about things in London. Um, And basically, I continued doing that blog for sort of, well, I still have it, actually, my Mm -hmm. little blog, um, even though it's very vintage now and sort of often gets forgotten about um, in favour of Instagram and all things visual. But um, yeah, so I started that and then moved more into Instagram and taking photos and styling food setups um, when Instagram kind of really hit the scene probably, what, seven, eight years ago? It's crazy now. Time's gone so fast. Um, And from that, um, started up Weekend Journals with my husband and brother. It originally started because my husband and I had done a six-month honeymoon after getting married, and we sort of came back and felt like we wanted to cement our interest in travel and something Mm. that was tactile, that you could hold and feel and have on your coffee table. Um, So it was a bit of a gamble. Neither of us really knew what we were doing, um, but he learned how to use InDesign. I used my blog experience to mm-hmm. write um for the book and we actually got my brother involved and um, he's a sort of trained photographer and he does all the photos for weekend journals people often think that I do the photos because that's <laughs> what I do with the rest of my time but actually for weekend journals I do all the writing and my brother does the photos um and we started it up thinking about places that we really cared about um and Cornwall was somewhere that me, my husband and my brother all really love. Um, It felt like an obvious choice because Mm. it was somewhere that young people were travelling to, but there wasn't really the literature to show off the new independent things that were going on there. It was all sort of, you looked it up online, it was all about coastal walks or where to go and stay with a dog. Or, you know, it wasn't talking about the coffee roasters that were opening up or the little boutique hotel that was suddenly doing really well um so yeah we started up uh writing about Cornwall and as I said very much an experiment first book did quite well so then we moved into London Provence did a few more editions of Cornwall uh and our latest book last year was on Somerset so that's Weekend Journals in a nutshell. <laughs> I love it. And it's so interesting that even back then when Instagram was just starting out, you still had that sort of hunger for something a bit more real world, like you say, an actual physical book. And I think especially now a lot of people are, again, turning back towards those more tactile sources of information. They're sick of the scroll. They want to go a bit offline. So I think that's super interesting. You were ahead of the curve there, it feels like. <laughs> well, I think I think it was a, I grew up in a family of artists. Both my parents are artists and I was always encouraged to make things mm. Um you know, like my dad would not accept a, a store bought card for his birthday. Like mm. that was, you know, a real like condition in my family. You had to make a card, and I think I felt a bit sort of fraudulent to my childhood, like mm. doing everything online. And as much as I love Instagram, um, it is so fast moving. It's so digital. I just felt like I needed something that had a bit more of a, a life, yeah, um, and that I could kind of come back to and. Yeah, so not much money in bookmaking, but it it certainly like 
has has a nice quality to it definitely and then the other thing that struck me when you were talking you said how you know there was nowhere to find these cool under the radar um spots whether yeah, that's a coffee roast or a boutique hotel and it kind of made me think about this whole you know staycation and when you think of british holidays you do think a rainy walk on the beach or like a soggy fish and chips on a very sad looking pier and you know wherever and actually especially back then pre-pandemic there was this real reluctance, I feel, for a lot of people. A, a British holiday wasn't really like an actual proper holiday. I'd love to hear how you've seen that sort of shift over the time you've been doing it. And actually this like return of people going back, the rise of the staycation, the pandemic, just, you know, meaning we had to make the most of this amazing country we live in. And actually how yeah. people's perceptions have sort of changed following that. Well, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Like this this notion of luxury and what is luxury. Mm. Um, is it all about price point or is it how it makes you feel? Um, I mean, one thing that is really interesting, I think, especially post-pandemic, is how much actually travelling in Britain is not a cheaper option. Mm, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it seems weird because in some ways it's like, oh, well, it's such an effort now getting on a plane and sustainability-wise wise it feels you've got to justify it much more to go on a plane for a long weekend. Mm. So, you know, going to Britain is the easy option. But in some ways it isn't because... You know, I don't know exactly what my point is here, but train travel is very expensive. Um, you know, hotels in Britain are certainly not cheap, but actually there's a luxury in in the kind of comfort of not having to go through customs mm. and put your toiletries in a plastic bag and wait for the delayed flight and just being able to hop in your own car and, you know, get to somewhere by the end of Friday night without having to, you know, factor in this, that and the other. That almost feels more luxurious now than mm -hmm. than having hotter climate and you know having a new cuisine I think luxury is is very much like something different um so yeah I'm not sure I really answered your question no. there but um <laughs> <I love laughs> just sort of thinking it through as we talk no, it's so true and actually it's the little things isn't it like you know the language like you're not stumbling trying to like remember your GCSE French and actually you go to the supermarket and you can find everything you need for a cup of tea like you know it's the simple things it actually makes it a lot more seamless and actually I think one thing that was amazing was you saw just after COVID like the whole south of England it felt like was fully booked for like two years you like literally couldn't get a holiday home or a cottage or a hotel room like 12 months in advance it was crazy and then off the back of that there's been so much it feels like investment, people moving out of London and taking, you know, all those culinary hospitality skills they maybe had there, opening their own whether it's restaurants or coffee shops or bakeries and these like new booming little local industries just bringing new life back to what had been quite maybe sleepy villages or very seasonal, but becoming a bit more year round, which is great to see. Yeah, I think that's it. And I think, you know, so many people, because of of this new luxury of working from home, which, you know, long may it continue, if it yeah. continues, um, so many people, talented, young creatives from the big cities were actually desiring a life that was a bit slower and thinking, hang on a sec, why am I going to open a restaurant in London and have all this competition and have to get, you know, produce from Cornwall on a train every day? And why don't I just open in Cornwall? Or why don't I just open in Somerset? You know, it's like cuts out that whole section of yeah. stress. And, and actually it's, it's so much easier to create personality in a restaurant or create a destination outside of a city. Mm -hmm. um, you have that space to really do something different and unique. And that's that's sort of, I think, what's going on at the moment. There's a lot of, um, you know, because food is the main thing I do, so I'm noticing it mostly in restaurants, but seeing these really talented chefs from London or from Manchester or other big cities um, – actually now opening up in the countryside in more rural areas using produce that's really local and doesn't need to travel on a train or whatever um and then it becomes more of a destination um to go to rather than you know just settling for city life absolutely and then speaking of destinations then let's get into holidays because you mentioned Cornwall Somerset these amazing destinations but maybe if you had to think about your top three UK holidays or what you would do how do you recommend that maybe people from England looking to have a stay okay, how should they approach it what should they do where should they go or maybe even people who live here who aren't actually British themselves are there any pockets they should head to first and what do you think they should do while they're down there well um I don't know, maybe it's a bit boring to mention Margate because I feel like it really came up a few years ago. But I, I revisited in the last six months and I feel like it's really got a lot going on at the moment. There's things opening every week almost. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I've had a couple of really, really great weekends in Margate recently. And not just Margate, but the whole area of Kent. There's yeah. um, a little hotel called Up. I think it's called Up Down Farmhouse. Up Down, yeah. Up Down, which is just so lovely, like delicious food co- cooked over the fire, lovely bedrooms, um, you know, feels rural, not that difficult to get to, especially if you live in London. Mm. Um, so that's lovely. Um, love, love, love Margate. There's two really beautiful boutique hotels that have opened that just um, a few months ago. Can't remember their names now, obviously. Um, but um, yeah, Margate's really great. And there's a lot of restaurants, little wine bars, um, bakeries opening um, there. Then um, I've actually spent quite a bit of time in Scotland recently, which is technically Britain. And yeah, I think, I mean, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Because obviously lots of people have been to these destinations pre-pandemic and now visiting, I feel like, wow, there's so much has happened. Yeah. Um, it feels amazing that people have been brave enough to open businesses considering the the rough ride yeah. that they've had the last few years. Um, but yeah, uh, Glasgow, I'm particularly sort of enamoured with at the really? moment. There's a lot of really cool things happening there. Yeah. And and also, you know, it's it's one of these places where actually like, I'm trying to learn to enjoy the travel to and from mm. the place, like make that part of the trip, make that part of the holiday, like get yourself a lovely picnic, sit on the train, read a book, watch a film, like rather than seeing it as a chore to get there, you know, some of these train trips are so beautiful mm. in the UK. Um, and yes, they can be expensive, but if you book ahead of time and off peak times mm. and all the rest of it, like, yeah, absolutely loved Glasgow. Yeah. So and especially that train ride in particular, you've got all the sea from like Newcastle upwards with those amazing cliffs and the views and the hills past Edinburgh. It's amazing. So yeah, I love yeah. that. Go to M and S, stock up, get your tinny. Exactly. Enjoy the train. <laughs> that's fantastic and um let's talk about like as well as the food and the drink side of things there's so much to do and I know both those places you mentioned then they're both quite artsy obviously you've got the Turner down in Margate and then Glasgow is having it feels like such a sort of creative boom there's so much going on all these different pockets have got so much to offer culturally as well definitely um and I think that like that's it like maybe steer I know I have also just mentioned Edinburgh but steering clear of the the obvious tourist places mm. and actually carving out a new itinerary um somewhere a bit less obvious mm-hmm. like there's there's a kind of real feeling of joy when I go somewhere and find a few places that I haven't already seen plasters all over you know my followers yeah. the people I follow on Instagram's feeds like it's it's that's the kind of joy of Instagram, like Mm -hmm. following things that you want to see, but also discovering new places that you haven't seen on Instagram comes with a real like thrill. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I'm trying to think where else. I mean, other places like Wales, I think is having a real moment. Mm -hmm. The only problem with Wales is there's no Wi-Fi anywhere. So (laughs) you can't look up what to do when you're there (laughs) because the Wi-Fi is so bad. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So so in that way, it's really nice. You are properly off grid, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. I sometimes find when I'm driving, I went to Grover Narbeth, which is like far southwest Wales, as far as you can go. And my signal was like bar by bar, just like decreasing, you know, like in hot fuzz. And I got there and I was like, God, I literally have no signal. It's the middle of the night. Well, I mean, you know, we don't live in a very big country when you think of like Europe and Australia. And, you know, England's really quite small and it's only I don't know. I feel like these pockets of remoteness and hidden gems are only going to be hidden for so yeah. long you know especially with people like me writing books on <laughs> where to go soon everyone everyone's going to know about everywhere so yeah finding somewhere a bit remote and a bit off the mm-hmm. the beaten track is really like exciting yeah well I'd love to hear about that then so how do you find these off the off grid or under the radar finds is it local you just go there you look around or do you have any any resources you turn to um, I'm quite obsessive. <laughs> I think that's like the first thing to note. Um, I don't know, like I, I start with probably an Instagram saved folder. Like there are definitely destinations that I'm noticing. I'm saving more and more places to go in them on my Instagram. Mm. Um, I mean, separate to Weekend Journals recently, I was in Latvia. Um, yeah. And that was because I'd sort of seen two or three people I follow go to really interesting looking restaurants in Riga the Mm. capital city and um it got to the point where I was like right I've got like five places in this folder you know obviously something is telling me to go to Riga so um 
yeah, actually really not very cheap to get there. <laughs> I was like, surely it's, you know, quite a hidden destination. Flights will be cheap. No. Yeah. Um, anyway, I had a great time. Um, and how did I discover places when I was there? Well, I guess once I've decided I'm going to go somewhere, once we've decided we're going to do a book on somewhere, I sort of start reaching out and doing a bit of a deep sea dive on, you know, all kinds of platforms, like where mm. where's being recommended. When I get there, I usually on the first morning go to a speciality coffee shop and find like people that are on the same wavelength as me, have the same interests and basically ask them for their recommendations and then sort of take it from there. And, and basically anywhere that's been recommended more than once, mm. those are the places I go to first. And by the end of the weekend, I've usually got a list of places that I haven't had the time to get yeah. to because the more places you go to, the more recommendations you get. Oh, that's so clever. It's like crowdsourcing your yeah. <laughs> holiday agenda. I love it. Yeah, my husband hates it because basically we spend the entire weekend like walking back on ourselves because like we'll go to a bakery at the end of, I don't know, the end of the trip and they'll then say, oh, the one coffee shop you have to go to is this one and he's like no no we did that area yesterday morning I'm like but we need to go back to this coffee shop it's the one place we have to go to and he's like no we did that area yesterday we're not walking another 35 minutes just to go to a coffee shop but usually I get my own way and we do go back but yeah it, it's a bit mad so if you're if you're looking for a weekend spent walking in circles on a constant caffeine high then exactly I'm your <laughs> this co- is the approach for you yeah 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 <laughs> Oh, amazing. Well, I always like to wrap these conversations up with a little closing tradition of a quick fire round. Um, Today's are all sort of holiday themed. So let's give it a go, shall we? Okay. Okay. What is your favourite spot in the UK for a holiday? Oh God. Oh God. Cornwall. (laughs) Love it. (laughs) I'm feeling so stressed. (laughs) Any fave places while you're down there? Penzance. Is it worth the car ride? <laughs> Go on the train. Just yeah. sit on the train until you get to the end of the line. Yeah, it's, you know what, it's it's the less visited Little Sister of, of St. Ives mm. and it's got so much going for it. Beautiful yeah. um, Lido, Art Deco Lido, amazing little hotel, Chapel House, lots of good food. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Fantastic, love that. Leads me on to my next one nicely. Favourite kind of place to swim? Is it a Lido, a river, a lake, a sea? Oh, I have to say, I've got a bit of a weird, irrational fear of fish. Mm. So um, I'm more of a paddler than a swimmer. But yeah, so I guess I'd probably pick a Lido. Yeah, lovely. And they have changing rooms, so very handy. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So are you more of a on the beach by the day kind of gal or are you a hike in the hills? Um, I'm a city girl through and through. I always find a city. I'd love to be more adventurous and countryside chic, but... Oh, I just it's love exploring cities. Yeah. Cities and towns for me. But um I mean I, I am also a bit of a sun worshipper, which I know is very mm. bad nowadays. But yeah, in the heat I love just lying on the sun. Oh. But now that I've got two young kids, that's sort of a thing of the past. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can, people. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what's your one holiday treat that you always have to get? Um I love well, I don't know if this is a holiday treat, but I love buying myself a new perfume mm. in um, holiday destinations, like finding a local perfumer, because I find that A, it's a perfume that no one else usually has, and B, that scent always reminds me of that trip. I was going to say that's so clever, and you can pop it on when you want to relive your holiday memories. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I've got some very quirky scents from like Mexico and has um I got on recently from Edinburgh and yeah really yeah, nice I love that I'm gonna start doing that <laughs> <laughs> and what's one thing that you never travel without um what do I never travel out my diary um uh-huh. I have a paper diary still unlike most people and I just love it for like writing notes writing memories in yeah. and also just writing all the places we've been and I've got I use Smithson diaries which is a real luxury I know and I've got like 14 of them lined up on my shelf downstairs so yeah. I can flick back and find sort of you know things that I found in places How from 14 years ago oh that's yeah. so nice God, I think I want to start doing that too <laughs> <laughs> And then finally, what are your top three destinations you want to visit in 2024? Oh gosh, so many, so many. Um, It's mad because I used to travel so much, like two or three times a month, but since COVID and having kids and just 
cost of life generally. Um, yeah, I don't travel as much as I'd like to. Um, but three places I would love to go. Um, oh gosh, really, really hard. Um, I'd love to go back to Australia because one of my best Mm. friends is living there at the moment and I think they've got a really exciting food scene. Um, I would love to go back to Copenhagen because of all the bakeries. Mm. Um, And then there's so many new places I want to go to, but I now obviously can't remember any of them. Um, I just, to be honest, I really love doing city breaks in places that I haven't, like I said, haven't seen all over Instagram. So Riga was great. Um, I'd love to go back to Vilnius in Lithuania. Yeah, yeah, lots of like remote places Mm -hmm. that kind of piqued my interest love it somewhere you can go find your speciality coffee shop and just wander (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) i love it oh millie it was such a pleasure to chat thank you so much for giving me a lot of life inspo i didn't know i needed perfect (laughs) diaries i'm going to start shopping after this yeah i feel like i need to go and book some holidays now it's sort of like reignited my interest in travel and yeah i I love it well i hope you get those holidays in and let me know where you end up jetting off to or training off to exactly thank you so much for having me not at all thank you for listening to this snapshot conversation for more curated spaces content head to our website instagram or wherever you listen to your podcasts 